Yeah, so um, I got into coaching because of my past career. So out of college, I ended up uh, getting employed in the field of nutrition. I worked at Southwest General Hospital and I was doing all this nutrition guidance with a lot of sick people. And so what I found out in that path is that I, I would have these repeat patients coming back to me with no changes. And I realized like, I didn't really enjoy working with sick people anymore. And it was the environment that I was in. And so uh, through that path, I realized I wanted to start volunteering and coaching. I, uh, we had a little running team at the hospital. Uh, they supported my uh, running post-collegiately in races and we were able to, to uh, compete in, in local races and all. And so that kept me engaged in the running field. So I decided it was time for me to start volunteering. So even though I was working full time, I was seeking out positions to volunteer. And I started with um, Beaumont High School. So they took me in as a volunteer. I worked with a very successful program. I was very, uh, we actually, the cross country team was third in the state that year. And the uh, track team won the state championships for division two. So I felt very fortunate to, to be engaged with a really successful program from the start. Now, what, how did high school lead me into collegiate coaching was um, kind of a, a little miracle. So um, I had a connection with a lot of uh, officials from uh, my high school career and them knowing me. And one of the officials heard that I was doing this part-time coaching. And she said to me that there was a opening as an assistant at Case Western Reserve. So these are in my early years back in um, the, the early 90s. And so I reached out to Case Western and actually was hired for that position. So that really got me into um, collegiate coaching. I never really believed that that was gonna be happening. I didn't plan for it. And it kind of just fell into my lap. From that point on, uh, I got connected with other coach, other coaching in my career uh, as I moved on to um, Cleveland State and then John Carroll and then back to Case Western. So that's kind of the beginning of my stories of coaching. <laughs> yeah, so going back to my assistant days, um, I guess I'm gonna fast forward to to the days in which you know I was became a head coach at Case Western Reserve. Uh, there was a, a couple of memories I think were very strong, but I go back to the year of 2006. And even though the men had qualified for the national championships in 2003, I think 2006 was most memorable because of the historical changes that happened uh, within the women's program. So that was the first year in which the women's program qualified to the national championships. Uh, so kind of a story leading up to that, knowing that uh, we were undefeated that entire season uh, through every race that we ran in, uh, it brings us to the national championships. And uh, it was almost this picture perfect season in, in the sense of uh, winning records, um, that was the year in which I was named Regional Coach of the Year. And then we, we uh, performed a race at the Voice of America Park where uh, the national championships was being held. And, uh, and then when I say picture perfect, it was a picture perfect day as we competed there uh, in the past. So as we fast forward to the national championships, it was a week of rain that prior to the national championships and the entire course at Voice of America flooded. So here we come in our first national championship. The course is completely flooded. As we're doing course review, uh, literally there was mud up to our and puddles up to our knees. They're pumping the course, the course um, for like drainage. And it ends up that 
um, as we're doing course review, we, the girls are like almost crying and, and um, I'm trying to like hold everything together. And so I took the group um, and we just, I said, let's go sit in a puddle. So we sat in a puddle, the whole team, it was up to our waist and we just talked about the greatness of this season. We talked about how everybody is in the same situation and that we're all going to compete to the best of our ability. And why was that so memorable for me? Uh, I think it was because it stirred every single emotion that I that happened between my runners. Um, and we were able to get on that line. We were able to perform. Um, and we were, we ended up finishing with two All-Americans that year. And we were 10th in the country on our first attempt at the national championships. So it was really a pivotal year. It was a, a, a great memory. And it ended up being a tremendous amount of fun, even with all the split emotions that we had throughout that entire weekend. You know, that is a really difficult question for me to answer because I I believe I have two people that I feel that are have been pivotal in my career and have, um, uh, you know, attributed influence in, into what I've been doing. And I wanna start with my father because uh, I don't know if a lot of people know, but my father was a middle school coach he was a feeder of, he was a coach that fed most of the high school programs. And even though my dad was a chemist and worked in the field of chemistry, I think most youth believed he was really a coach. Um, he was my first coach. He was uh, the person that supported me in my advancement from a runner to a coach. And he was that person that checked in on me every single week knowing that um, I had something exciting going on through that weekend and that he wanted to know and be a part of, of my coaching life. So really my dad, I think, was that first person that um, you know gave me the interest in running, uh, bridged my gap from a runner to, to being a coach and really portrayed that interest throughout all the years uh, of my coaching. Um, the other person obviously, and it, this becomes kind of like uh, a, the name that ever that keeps resonating throughout Case Western Reserve, but uh, Coach Sudek. Sudek was my, I worked under him. He took me in as a, as a, a volunteer um, assistant coach, then paid me very little money for the four years I, I had for uh, coaching at Case Western Reserve. Uh, he was, Coach Sudak was one of those people that was always uh, loving, caring, um, and he absolutely uh, brought enthusiasm into every day. And so I, and not only was Coach Sudak there for me as a coach uh, during my times with Case Western Reserve, but as I moved into different positions, he always checked in on me. He always wanted to make sure that things were going well for me. Um, one of the things he said to me continuously is like, we should have never let you go. They're, you know, um, you're valuable in this, in this uh, coaching career. And, and I, I just um, always believe that he was that person that leveraged me into staying into coaching and always gave me the pep talks and always uh, was there for me at every moment that I needed advice um, throughout my coaching years. Yeah, so sports when I was growing up. I, I think back, I was a multi-faceted athlete. So in the fall, I would play volleyball, um, run cross country, in the winter, I would play basketball. In the spring, I would do both track and field and softball. So I think what has changed today is that uh, kids are really specializing in sport. And 
honestly, in the recruiting process, I'm looking for that multifaceted athlete. I'm looking for the person that hasn't done just one thing. So, um, you know, as we look forward, um, you know, I'm sorry, as I look back, I think that there was uh, just kids were involved in everything and there wasn't specialization. And today, I think there's a lot of specialization and with that sometimes comes um, maybe not the growth factor we see, uh, have seen in the past. Um, so I guess as we look to recruiting, I am looking for that multifaceted athlete. And I look to my best athletes and many of my All-Americans who did play different sports in high school and um, became better athletes or became, became better runners uh, as they specialized in college. Yeah, so um, I don't think a lot of people know that I participated in an international event in the Soviet Union in 1989. Uh, that I believe was the most impactful event of my life, both culturally and the experience of running a half marathon, which I had never participated in in my life, coming from uh, a short track career. I was mostly 800, 1500 runner, uh, also running cross country, uh, but I trained it and competed in a half marathon. So um, I was part of a group called uh, P Cleveland Partner Cities, which was sharing peace and understanding between nations. So we, uh, I was invited as a delegation from Cleveland to participate in Volgograd, uh, the Soviet Union at the time. Uh, this was actually a month before the Berlin Wall came down. So it was uh, September of 89 and um, there were teams from uh, the Soviet Union, from Japan, China, uh, Poland, Czechoslovakia, the UK, and uh, other UK countries, and um, they brought us together. We had events leading up to to the actual race that included uh, visiting uh, a Soviet spa, went to the their Olympic training centers. Um, and uh, honestly, the, the actual race was probably the most underwhelming part of it, but the entire experience was, um, was probably, it was the most exciting experience of my life, both culturally, um, the communication in the race with the runners, even though we couldn't speak the same language, we really found a way to communicate through hand language, uh, actually looking at each other um, and and you know pooling together to uh, compete as um, an actual team with different nations joining together. So it was uh, a very exciting experience. I I have never run in anything um, even close or remotely or experienced witnessing a international experience uh, of runners. So it was, it was a really memorable piece of my, my running career post-collegiately. Oh my gosh, I am passionate about gardening. And this spring it allowed me to actually um, start uh, many plants from seed and I, I grew three different types of tomatoes from seed, cucumbers, sunflowers, pumpkins, and just seeing the transformation from seed to plant to fruit uh, is just a miracle to me. So I, I actually grew a my favorite flower, a sunflower, that was two stories high this year. So from one tiny little seed to a two-story uh, high sunflower was um, really a beautiful experience. So I just like, you know, would share that with people and, and enjoy the, the transformation of seed to food. <laughs>